Hi, welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Reed Hamblin, and this is my review of Ivy Ho's Claustrophobia. I assume that's exactly how the director wants us to refer to her directorial debut. I offer the following title card as evidence. Someday I hope I can be that important. Oh wait, I can! That kind of thing always strikes me as more than a little pretentious. Uh, rather than being impressed, I usually find myself asking serious philosophical questions. Who the fuck are you? Ivy Ho is a great scriptwriter, and I mean that sincerely. She's written movies like Comrades Almost a Love Story and July Rhapsody. She came up with the story for Two Become One, a movie that I really, really liked. But being a great writer doesn't guarantee that you'll become a great director. The same guy that wrote The Shining directed Maximum Overdrive. I'm just saying. Claustrophobia tells the story of two people who work together and occasionally carpool after work with some of their office colleagues. That's about all I can be sure of in the story. It's told with so much subtlety that uncultured savages like me obviously can't discern the essence of the film. Uh, wait. Something tells me that I should have pronounced that word as essence. I get the feeling that a lot of people that worked on this movie used French words like vignette or jouissance. It's just a feeling I get, you know, kind of like deja vu. Quite honestly, I just don't like these kinds of movies. So it's essentially unfair of me to review them because I'm incapable of being fair. But claustrophobia doesn't really help itself that much either. The narrative is told in reverse order. It works its way backwards so that the movie ends where the story itself begins more than a year before the opening scene. Unfortunately, it also feels like it takes more than a year to get there. This is one of those movies that actors love to be in and be seen in because it's full of long takes of them really acting. Acting like everyday people, which is what you and I do all day, every day. But we don't get to retreat to a trailer between takes, do we? There's a reason movies rarely attempt to replicate real life verbatim. It's because life is tedious and banal and soul-crushingly dull. Technically, the film looks wonderful. I'm not going to argue that at all. But for people like me with a short attention span and a bad caffeine habit, long shots of women staring meaningfully into the distance make me want to pull my own hair out. Why do you think I keep my head shaved? I have to admit that in most of the movies I watch, if there's a long shot of a woman staring unblinkingly off into the distance, it's usually a dead hooker. That don't make me a bad person. The ponderous exposition in claustrophobia is excruciating. Claustrophobia makes watching paint dry seem pornographic by comparison. Watching this movie made me feel claustrophobic, like I was trapped and I couldn't get away. A lot of people go to the movies to be entertained and distracted, especially here in Hong Kong, which probably explains why the movie didn't do very well here outside of critic circles. Film critics love these kinds of movies. The word precious springs to mind, which is located in the dictionary between perversion and pretension. Remember when I said the director's title card was pretentious? So is using classical music as the background for a shot. Twice. I was hoping that it would turn out to be coming from someone's car stereo, but it didn't. I don't care for it personally, but other people might find it disturbing in other ways. You are not even a fucking Chinese! What's even more pretentious and far more insulting is the blatant classism on display in the characterizations. Jewel works in the office. She's loud, unrefined, and obviously lower down the social scale than the others. Not only does she throw up because she drinks too much, she then looks at it and talks about it. And then she talks about shitting. You know how those people are. But hey, she's not trying to bang a married man, is she? She's also the only person in this movie with any sense of agency. Everyone and everything else in claustrophobia makes Wong Kar Wai look like Michael Bay. I'm sorry, the aspiring homewrecker and the spineless philanderer never seem to muster up the courage to fulfill their filthy urges and somehow I'm supposed to feel bad for them? Go f yourself. Or be like them and just think about doing it, but don't ever really do it. To be fair, maybe they actually did and I just missed it because the reveal was too subtle for my barbarian palate. But you know what? 
when the central aspect of your plot is symbolized by a chewing gum commercial, I don't feel so bad. You know, at least Stephen King had a cocaine problem. Hey, people can make whatever movie they want, and they're entitled to that. And I can respond to it however I want. I'm entitled to that. I am, after all, a credentialed intellectual and a doctor. It might be difficult for me to recommend this film because I didn't enjoy it, but I can't actually say it's not a good film. And I know that seems weird. It looks really nice and I guess it is well made. But if you want to watch this movie, do it the right way. Rent it online or buy a disc. Don't watch it illegally. In the description, there's a link where you could buy this movie. That's what I need you to do, believe it or not. If you enjoyed this review, please leave me a comment. If you didn't enjoy the review, please leave me a comment. If you think downloading movies is okay, va te faire foutre. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe because then you'll see all the new videos. Tout suite. Thank you for watching.